Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to uh, class. Uh, before we begin, can I request one of you to lead us in prayer, please? Neelam, can you lead us in prayer? Neelam or Kannan, one of you can lead us in prayer. Ma'am, can I pray in Hindi? Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. प्रवेश में से धन्यवाद धन्यवाद प्यारे पिता मैं इस तो समय के लिए दिन के लिए प्यारे खुदा आपको कोटि कोटि धन्यवाद देते हूँ कि आपने प्यारे खुदा में सुनरा अवसर दिया कि हम सब प्यारे पिता भाई बन और मैम सब लोग इस इसमें ऐड होकर के प्यारे खुदा क्लासेस कर सके और आपके वस्तुओं को सीख सके और आपके वस्तुओं के अगुआ में चल सके इसको हम धन्यवाद देते हैं उनके प्यार पिता के जो कुछ भी मैं पढ़ाती हूँ हम लोग अच्छे से सीख सके और उसे अपने जीवन में लागू करने वाले बने ताकि हमारे जीवन से हमारे कार्य से प्यारे खुदा आपके नाम की महिमा धन्यवाद प्यार पिता हम सभी को हर एक प्रकार की बुराई से हर एक बुरे लोग बुरी संगति से बचा के रख प्यार खुदा ताकि हमारे जीवन से और हमारे जीवन के हर एक कार्यो के द्वारा आपके नाम की प्रशंसा हो मैं आज के सुंदर समय को इस दिन को प्यार पिता आज के स्टडीज को पूरी रीति से आपके हाथों में समर्पित करती सारा आदर महिमा आपको देती एक छोटे से व्यक्ति यश मसी के नाम में मांगते हैं थैंक यू नीलम गुड टू हियर योर वॉइस आई थिंक दिस द फर्स्ट टाइम आई एम हियरिंग यू एंड सॉरी आई डोंट नो यू वेल यू जॉइंट लास्ट ईयर और वे यू बिफोर यू जॉइन इन द फर्स्ट ईयर और सेकेंड ईयर और Neelam What about the others can anyone tell me about Neelam uh, she joined us in the first year or she's this student from Varanasi Yes yes ma'am from Varanasi Manu Sharma Neelam and Khushbu Kumari they came yes. from short term bible college mm. Yes okay now i remember okay <laughs> forgot it okay thank you Kiran Okay, today we, uh, you know, we are going to look at um, learning styles uh, of children, but basically learning styles of even it's it's common to even adults. So you can also identify what is your learning style, and um, even if you are a preacher or a teacher, you know these learning styles do apply uh, to make your teaching, your preaching. Uh, to make your seminars more effective so we are going to learn the learning styles uh, specifically with children but all of this is also applicable to adults but we'll see how we can minister effectively to children using their um, learning styles okay um, so um, we have our, we learn through our five senses uh, what are our five senses Anyone knows what is our five senses? What are your five sense organs? So your five senses. Come on, how do you gather information? Through your sense organs. You can see, touch, hear, smell, and taste. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. It so is, basically, it. now you are uh, seeing me. you're seeing the powerpoint on the screen you are hearing me uh, so you're um, learning through your two sense organs by seeing and hearing and of course we also learn through touch through you know uh, our fingers our hands um, and also through taste okay uh, so seeing hearing uh, touch uh, uh, taste and also through smell okay so this is the primary way through our sense organs through our five sense organs it's the primary way through uh, which our brain receives information okay so our brain receives information through these five um, uh, sense uh, organs or uh, you know through our five senses 
Um, so even as you preach or teach or do a seminar or teach even children, you know, it's good to use these five senses uh, so that you get most of your teaching activity. Okay, uh, so you can get most out of your teaching activity. That means whatever you are doing, you know, uh, you're able to communicate effectively, able to um, communicate better to people and they are able to receive um, uh, better. They're able to receive well uh, because you have, uh, uh, you know, catered to their uh, learning styles or you have given them information through their uh, five sense organs, which best, uh, you know, they get, um, they are accustomed to or they like or they have a tendency to flow with, okay? Um, so when learning activity appeals to two or more senses, then more learning uh, happen. So now you're learning through two, um, you're learning through two sense activities. Uh, you're learning through your, um, you know, by hearing, you're also learning by seeing. So when learning activity appeals uh, to two or more senses, then, you know, learning happens much more or learning happens better. I'm not saying that if I don't show this PowerPoint, then, you know, learning will not happen. Yes, it will happen, but, you know, learning happens better when, uh, when it appears appeals to two or more um, senses that uh, we use, okay? Uh, when you use multiple senses, um, then you, you know, you reduce boredom. People don't get bored. Uh, for example, now uh, you're, uh, you'll be, you're teaching or you're preaching and suddenly you bring about, uh, uh, you show a PowerPoint, um, the next slide, or maybe you just do an activity, just, you know, turn to your neighbor and and tell them that, uh, you know, God loves them because you're speaking about God's love. So what you're basically getting them to do is to, you know, do some activity in between, or you can just tell them to, uh, you know, just uh, clap hands and thank God and praise him for, uh, you know, what he has done, you know, what you have communicated to them, you preached about God's finished work on the cross, you can just ask them to, you know, stand up or, you know, just clap their hands, praise God. Or maybe you've just taught them about, uh, you know, evangelism or uh, ministering healing and deliverance, you ask them to step out of their place and go and pray for somebody. So you're basically getting them to uh, move around you're basically getting them to touch somebody, uh, you know, uh, 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 do some activity. So learning happens uh, better also when you use multiple senses and it actually reduces boredom because uh, you know, people get bored when they keep listening to uh, a 50 minute class or um, 40 minutes. I think the best attention span for people is maximum for adults is 20 to 25 um, minutes. So you for children also, you know, the attention span is much lesser, shorter. Um, say about 10 to 15 minutes. And so you can reduce their boredom uh, by getting them to, you know, uh, show them some pictures or doing some short activity or getting them to uh, discuss something quickly amongst themselves or uh, giving them a quick quiz or doing an object lesson or, um, you know, you've just uh, narrated a narrative to them. You can get them to uh, enact it. Uh, so you reduce boredom. Uh, learning happens much better because you're appealing to their uh, five senses and also you reduce behavior problems okay now children uh, who are uh kind of, you know, extra hyperactive children or children who are, you know, basically a little naughty, you know, they will um, tend to, you know, play up and uh, sometimes disturb the class. So you can also reduce behavior problems by um, uh, bringing in different activities that appeal to all the uh, five senses, okay? Now, uh, most of the time uh, when we teach or preach or even when we minister to children, we use uh, the two very common, um, uh, you know, uh, senses. What are those? So the two most common senses that we use when we preach or teach or even minister to children. What are the two most important senses that we basically minister to or communicate to when we preach or teach?
you can type it in the okay hearing good and the other one is seeing yeah thank you so hearing and uh, seeing okay because you use powerpoints uh, and things like that um so you know um but most of the time we don't use uh, you know uh, the senses uh, of um, smell and taste so we don't use um, a smelling and tasting activities uh, and you know both of these can be very uh, effective in learning but they are least used okay so smelling and tasting activities uh, can be most effective in learning but these are least used okay so the learning activities uh, basically allow children to say or do something uh, which results in uh, the greatest ability for them to recall uh, what they have learned to remember what they have learned and also to demonstrate what they have learned for example you can have a debate or you can have a quiz or you can get them to enact um, so all of these learning activities or a discussion time uh, based on what you have taught them all of these learning activities actually say or do something which results in you know bringing out uh, uh, the ability to for children to recall to remember all that they have learned and also to demonstrate uh, you know uh, what they have learned and hence you know if uh, they have understood right and uh, and so also we know that learning has been complete or your teaching has been uh, worth the time and the effort that you have uh, taken so we look at um, the different uh, you know senses through which we can communicate uh, information and through which learning can happen effectively and we'll see how we can use these different senses so the first one is um, learning by hearing so they are called as auditory learners uh, some people learn very well just by hearing okay and so uh, those kind of learners are called auditory um, learners um, uh, you know uh, hearing is perhaps the most used teaching methodology that we all use um, but when uh, you know when people are learning by hearing it does not mean that uh, you know nothing else is going on uh, you can also uh, you know enhance their um, uh, hearing experience their learning experience through uh, hearing by using you know um, uh, uh, you know, just uh, you can play something, some music in the background. You can use sound effects. For example, if you're, uh, uh, you know, doing creation and you said you, you're, you're talking about uh, God separating the waters above the wa and the waters below. So you can, you know, just make, have the sound of water, just play. Or, you know, he created animals. You can just, um, uh, you know, uh, have different sounds of animals playing in the background. Um, you know, sometimes you can even do, uh, 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 when you are narrating, you know, or when you're teaching, you can uh, use a lot of, lot of voice modulation. Uh, if you're, you know, going to be saying the same thing in the same tone, then it's going to be very, very boring. So you can keep changing your tone. Um, you know, you can, um, for example, if you're uh, narrating the blind man Bartimaeus story, then you can say, you know, blind man Bartimaeus was you was so eager to meet Jesus. He was, you know, he really wanted. So you, you know, look at my voice modulation. Really wanted to see Jesus. He knew this was a last chance, and you know, he can't just miss this chance. And and there was nobody who was willing to uh, help. Uh, the blind man, Bartimaeus. Nobody was just, will, uh, you know, willing to help him because all of them wanted themselves to meet Jesus and they just couldn't because there was such a big crowd. Now, in that big crowd, you know, how could they take this blind man and go to Jesus? And, um, you know, what do you think Bartimaeus uh, would have done? Do you think he just stood in the in one place, corner, just sulking and saying, oh, poor me, nobody's helping me, this is my last chance, you know, I missed it, if I had just, somebody would taken me to Jesus, you know, I could have at least, uh, uh, you know, received back my eyesight. So you see the voice modulation that I'm making when I'm narrating the um, uh, the the uh, the story of uh, Bartimaeus, and then you say you know you can just say uh, suddenly he thought about an idea, and he said, 
Jesus, son of the most high God, or son of David, have mercy on me. So, you know, a lot of voice modulation when you do that, you know, it uh, it just helps the hearers. Uh, even we see preachers, you know, when they are uh, preaching, um, suddenly they'll be soft, but when they're saying something very important, their voice comes out, they become very, very firm, affirmative, uh, strong, bold uh, in what they are saying. Um, so, uh, you know, when they're talking about something that is uh, really ministering to us, they can be very, very calm and talk very sweetly and very nicely uh, because it's so soothing for the hearers to hear their, that God ministers to them, that God really cares for you. He really loves you. But before that, they would have been on fire, you know, just talking and, and preaching and sharing the points about God's love. So you see, uh, voice modulation is very, very, uh, important um, you know also some of you if you are gifted your um, uh, your uh, uh, you know you can change voices of different people a man's voice a lady's voice in the narrative you know um, maybe um, blind mad Bartimaeus to say so somebody please take me to Jesus and a woman said Shh, keep quiet why are you shouting you know don't be crying stand there and quiet in the corner don't make a nuisance of, uh, you know, uh, or don't make a scene over here. Or, uh, don't put up a show or something like that. So you can have a male voice, you know, or say, somebody please help me, you know. And then uh, you have a lady's voice, keep quiet, don't, miss, don't make noise. You know, Jesus is here, what will he think? Uh, so like that, you know, you can, if you are good at uh, changing voices like a, a man's tone or lady's tone, a child's tone, you know, uh, for example, uh, Jesus is sleeping in the boat and the disciples thought they're going to die and they all went to Jesus and said, Jesus, we're going to die, you know, like a crying voice and things like that. So uh, very important uh, to make it more dramatic. It can look so dramatic, but, you know, uh, when you do that, you know, children are uh, paying attention to you. They are not lost. They're not getting bored. They're totally excited about what is happening. Um, and, you know, even older kids, when you do this, uh, you know, a little voice modulation, it also uh, helps. Uh, of, also, you can have puppets. And when you use puppets, you can, you know, you, you change the voices of each puppet, um, the t tone of voice, tones and um, voice modulation. You can speak like a woman. You can speak like a child. You can speak like a man. Um, or you can just have basically music playing in the background because some children learn even through music. So uh, learning by hearing is not just talking all the information, but it's important to have a lot of voice modulation. And so, you know, when you sing things, you know, very that are very, very important, be very strong, very firm. They say things that are very loving and the sun, you know, be very in a very nice, calm, uh, soothing tone. You can uh, speak like that. OK, so there are people who um, learn by hearing. And the next one is, um, you know, a few of them uh, learn by seeing. OK, so if you're learning, you're showing them you know, uh, you know, some children just don't uh, learn by hearing. They also love to see. So if you're not showing them any pictures and they'll be looking outside because they love to see the, you know, the trees and the nature and they'll be looking here, there, they'll be looking at somebody's fancy bag or Bible or, you know, something very attractive to their eyes uh, because they basically uh, enjoy learning by uh, seeing so you know we have a lot of uh, flashcards like pictures that we could use uh, you could even use um, you know uh, some of these uh, pictures that are available on the net you can put it in um, um, you know I'll just show you one that I made about blind man Bartimaeus okay mm, so this is about blind man Bartimaeus I basically where took some pictures and uh, scanned it and then I put it into, uh, uh, can you see the pictures on the screen about blind man Bartimaeus? This is Jesus entering the city. Can you at least type in your chat if you can see? Yes, yes no? See. Okay. Yes, no, we can okay, see. so blind man Bartimaeus is entering, uh, sorry, Jesus is entering the town and here is uh, Bartimaeus shouting out to God and, you know, uh, uh, to Jesus to help him. 
And then, you know, this man is telling him, quiet, keep quiet. And then he shouts louder. And Jesus says, bring the blind man to me. And um, so they bring him to Jesus and Jesus uh, heals him. Okay. So basically, you could uh, just show them this um, uh, pictures uh, as you're narrating the story. So I have uh, PowerPoints which I have prepared for... Um, um, you know, uh, for different um, uh, narratives in the Bible, uh, even sometimes, you know, you can show them movie clippings that we find in the in YouTube channel. You can just, uh, you know, save it and then you can show it to them, uh, play it for them, just, uh, you know, the particular scenes that you want. Or you can just even show them these uh, images uh, or pictures. Or if you don't have access to, um, you know, um, uh, uh, a uh, laptop you can even use uh, just basically you know these big uh, pictures that are that are available available in any uh, uh, you know uh, like om bookstores or any uh, uh, christian bookstores you can get pictures and also we have flannel uh, boards and flannel pictures flannel boards i don't have it with me here it's at the office these are really uh, you know nice boards with uh, very soft flannel cloth and uh, pictures that are there which have this uh, flannel material stuck behind. So when you take uh, a particular picture and put it on the board, it will just stay there, you know, uh, and you can just narrate the story as you're narrating the story. You can just use these different uh, uh, images or different pictures to narrate the story, putting it on the flannel glove and on the flannel board. And, uh, you know, children get very excited when they see it. So, um, there are uh, people who learn by seeing, so you get them to, you know, get puppets, uh, pictures, flannel figures, uh, show them videos. Um, and also you can do some things like, um, you know, you can have a small drama, you can uh, get them to enact what they have, um, you have just narrated. Uh, maybe you have narrated Zacchaeus' story, Blind Man Bartimaeus, you can get them to enact it. Or you can use object lessons. Basically, object lessons are, you know, using an object and uh, communicating a truth, uh, a, a concept which is very difficult to, for them to understand. You can communicate through uh, an object. You know, um, I'll, I'll talk about object lessons when we are uh, learning how to write our lesson plans. Or basically, you can even do a demonstration. I'll just show you what a demonstration means. A very simple thing. Now, for example, you're teaching them about uh, sharing. You know, it's more, uh, Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, when you give, you'll get a good measure, pressed down, shaken, uh, you know, full, and your cup will be overflowing. So give and will be given to you. So then you can, you know, do a small demonstration for teaching them that, you know, when you give, you will receive more or you will be even more blessed. So you can use a simple uh, sheet of paper and you can ask them how many corners are there in this sheet of paper. So how many corners do you see? How many corners do you see? Four. Okay, thank you. So just uh, you can tell them, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to give uh, one corner. Okay, I'm going to give one corner to just name any child in the class. So I'm saying I'm going to give one corner to uh, Kiran. Okay, now you can ask them how many corners do I have left? So how many corners are there? How many corners do I have on this? Three? How many corners are there? I have one, two, three, four, and five, right? Now just say I cut another corner and I give uh, this to Thomas, okay? I'm giving this corner to Thomas. So how many corners do I have left now on my sheet? Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six corners. Now, for example, I cut another corner and I give it to, just say, I'm going to give it to Kannan. Okay. Now, how many corners do I have left? Eight. 
seven okay correct one two three four five six seven so basically it's through a small demonstration you can cut the the, the last uh, end as well and so you say i started off with only four corners but i'm left with uh, seven okay so basic small um, demonstration uh, you know to show that um, you know uh, uh, that when we give we actually receive more or we have more we are more blessed when we uh, give than when we receive okay so even if you want to do a small demonstration about um, you know that they are valuable in god's side irrespective of whether they are naughty or whether they are uh, you know they get good marks or good grades or not you can just take um, you know um, a 10 rupee note i don't i didn't bring a 10 rupee note but just assume this is a 10 rupee note and just say you know maybe you're very naughty in school uh, you're constantly fighting with others you get um, you don't get good grades you don't uh, complete your homework you know uh, maybe you're um, uh, you don't listen to your parents so you know you feel like you are really you know worthless or good for nothing or maybe you can tell the child the child's uh, you know you're struggling to study you're doing your best you're not able to you take part in a competition you don't um, you know win and you you know feel like this you know uh, what do we do with this um, you know when this paper is crushed or this note is crushed like this we take it and throw it in the dustbin so you feel useless you feel hopeless you feel good for nothing but then you know you can open out the 10 rupee note okay i do that i take a 20 rupees or a 10 rupees note just open it out and say how many of you would want this 10 rupee note and then, you know, we'll have one or two hands going up and we'll ask them, why do you want this 10 rupee note even though it looks so crumpled? The child will say, I can go to the canteen and I can buy a chocolate or I can, you know, buy a candy bar or whatever because this is still worth 10 rupees. So then you can tell them, yes, you know, you know, no matter what we do, how we feel, even if we feel hopeless, good for nothing, we are still worth in God's sight. We never lose our value. You know, this is a 10 rupees note, whatever we do with it, crumple it, you know, even stamp it, you know, we can take it to the shop. The shopkeeper will take it and we can buy something for 10 rupees. It still has value. So you can just demonstrate to a small um through a small, small demonstration that they are still valuable to God irrespective of, um, you know, who they are and what they um, do. Okay, so small demonstrations like that you can do. And, um, of course, you can show a lot of views, a lot of visuals like pictures and, you know, PowerPoints and movies uh, uh, to um, help them learn through seeing. So these are basically uh, learners who are visual learners. They learn through um, seeing. The next one is um, those who learn by touching. Okay, um, some kids you constantly you see them. They will uh, they won't sit tight in their chair. They'll be moving. They'll be touching something. They'll be touching somebody's bag. They'll be touching the pencil box or the water bottle, or they won't even sit on their chair. They will always be like this, like this, or they'll be bending over the table, or they're just moving around. You know, uh, because these basically these children learn by touching, by moving. Uh, so they learn best uh, by moving or touching something. Um, uh, so you see them, they're constantly fidgeting or playing with a toy or a pencil, uh, you know, or a bag or something like that. So we need to put something in their hands or give them something uh, that you are, uh, you know, in the story that you're narrating uh, about, you know, uh, something that is talking uh, about the story, you can put it in their hands uh, so that they can hold it and they can, um, you know, they're learning through their, uh, to touch, they're experiencing, they're interacting. Uh, so what are the different things that you could use, um, you know, while uh, narrating your story the, that children or people who learn by touching can uh, learn most effectively. Uh, for example, if you're talking about creation or, um, you know, you're talking about uh, uh, how the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, you're talking about the floods that came during Noah's time, baptism of Jesus, you can just give them a glass of water or a bowl of water and they can just keep putting their hand in the water. So they are just basically learning through touch. 
uh, or if you're talking about how Stephen was stoned or, uh, you know, uh, when uh, uh, Jesus was tempted, Satan asked uh, Jesus to turn, uh, you know, uh, uh, the stones into bread. Uh, so you can just give them uh, stones in their hand. Or if you're talking about David's story, how, you know, he um, went to kill uh, Goliath and he used five smooth stones. You can just put some stones so they are, uh, they are um, holding on to it, they're touching it, and they're also listening to the story and they're learning by uh, touch. Okay. So if you're um, talking about baby Moses, how he was put in the water and among the uh, bushes, you know, the bulrushes, so you can give them grass, or you're talking about creation, you can put some plants in their hands. Uh, you're talking about the parable of the wise and the foolish builder, you put sand in their hands. Um, you're talking about uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Uh, you can have uh, bread that they can hold on to, or, uh, you know, Jesus is a good shepherd, or uh, David, you're talking about David and um, him being a shepherd, you can give them a stick that uh, resembles a staff. If you're talking, uh, narrating about uh, the Good Samaritan, you can have medicine or Dettol or, you know, bandages that they can just hold in their hand. Um, if you're talking about the parable of the sower, then you can have seed, mud, uh, you can have thorns. Or when you're talking about um, Jesus' crucifixion, basically you can have uh, thorns that they can just feel and touch. Um, and, you know, um, uh, Adam and Eve sin, you can just give them fruit. So, you know, these, uh, so your uh, children are learning also by seeing, by hearing, and also you are catering to their learning style of touch. Uh, so they are basically touching something that has, uh, you know, to do with the narrative that you are teaching uh, them. Now we had, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, just before uh, Good Friday, um, uh, we had done and something for our children. We had uh, different stations of the cross. Uh, we basically had the planetorium, uh, platorium where you know the where Jesus was beaten and the uh, uh, crown of thorns was put on his head, and then the, the Garden of Gethsemane. We uh, so we had uh, plants. We had a small stone there, and. Uh, then we had also another station where we had, uh, you know, table, the Lord's Supper, and uh, uh, where Jesus met with his disciples. Um, and we had the cross where we had a bucket with the uh, red water, uh, you know, and a bucket with clean water, and we had um, uh, nails on the cross. Uh, so, and we also had a wooden um uh, you know, a, a piece of wood and we had uh, nails that were just uh, uh, up so we, the children could put their hand and feel these, you know, big nails, strong nails. Um, so when we took them to the different stations, they basically touched the uh, crown of thorns. We had a crown of thorns there. They touched that, you know, they, we had a big, uh, uh, one minute. So uh, we had a, a, a big wooden stick uh, that was there. They could feel it. Uh, you know, when uh, uh, the, the Last Supper, we had the table where they all sat down. Uh, we had uh, the, you know, communion elements. And then there was a teacher who narrated to them what happened. And then, you know, they, they just saw all the elements. They touched it. Then they moved on to the Garden of Gethsemane where uh, there was the plants. And Jesus was, uh, you know, uh, his. Uh, you know, they, we just put a shawl there and he was praying. And then we had uh, the cross where we had these um, nails that were there. They felt the nails and just imagining how those nails went through Jesus's hands and his feet. And, uh, you know, they had to write down their sins. We had pieces of paper there. They had to write down their sins and take a nail and just pin it on the cross. Um, and then we had this... Um, bucket of red water that just symbolizes Jesus' blood that was shed for us and uh, you know a, a bucket of clean water that shows that you know when we uh, ask forgiveness for our sins you know Jesus cleanses us and we are clean and pure like that uh, clean water so you know uh, basically children were able to hear what was being uh, what happened through different stages is even when Jesus went to the cross uh, they were able to see and uh, you know, those who learn by touch, they were able to touch and experience. It was a powerful uh, learning experience for the uh, children. Okay, so uh, it's 
it, we might think it's difficult to, uh, you know, um, teach children by uh, learning through touch and smell and taste, but it's not that difficult, you know. Um, uh, we can get a lot of ideas and we can use that and, um, you know, children will be most benefited and uh, learning will be effective and they will enjoy coming back to your class. Now, few of the children also learn by smell. Um, you know, it's said that uh, an infant's uh, first bonding with their mother is through the sense of smell. So imagine how powerful a uh, smell can be in uh, recreating memory hooks for kids, uh, even as they're learning different Bible uh, stories. So how do we help them uh, through this uh, sense of uh, smell? Um, you know, basically, if you're talking about um, creation, you can get them different foods or vegetables or, uh, you know, um, uh, flowers, and uh, you can get them to smell that. Um, and, um, you know, uh, you know, when Jesus was uh, dying on the cross, he asked for water, they gave him vinegar. So you can get, um, you know, some little vinegar, they can just smell it. Um, uh, for example, when uh, the, the wise men visited uh, Jesus, you know, they gave him um, uh, incense, they brought incense, so you can just get some scented candles, fragrant candles, you can just burn for them, it'll just be a fragrance in the room, and these children will enjoy uh, learning through their uh, sense of smell. Okay, uh, the woman who showed her love for Jesus, you can bring perfume, uh, you know, uh, Jonah was in the belly of the fish. So you maybe you can just get a fish uh, and you can just get them to smell, uh, you know, and um, a few more things like uh, when you're talking about baby uh, Jesus or baby Moses or uh, Samuel as a kid, you can just get baby powder or baby lotion, baby cream, whatever. Uh, and uh, when you're talking about the fiery furnace, the burning bush, um, you know, you can just get uh, something that you have burnt, charred wood or, uh, you know, matches, and you can just get them to smell that. Um, uh, you know, good Samaritan, uh, basically, you can get some medicines, dead oil, some ointments uh, for them to smell. And uh, the, the Lord's Supper, uh, you're teaching them about that. You can um, get wine, uh, uh, sorry, grape juice. They can smell grape juice. Um, and you're talking about Jacob, you saw Mary and Martha and, uh, you know, their narratives, you can just get some food that they can smell because uh, they cooked for, uh, you know, uh, uh, Martha was busy cooking for Jesus and, uh, you know, Esau was good at making the, uh, uh, sorry, G Jacob was good at making the stew, okay, so they can just smell some food. We're talking about for fruit of the spirit, you can just get them some fruit that they can um, smell, okay? So you can use uh, creativity like this to, uh, you know, a piece to the learning style of children who learn by uh, uh, smell. Okay, so the next one, sorry, I didn't put that uh, by smell. Okay. And then we have uh, the last one is uh, learning by tasting. So here also you can, um, you know, cater to the needs of uh, children who learn um, by tasting. So basically, again, you know, you could, um, if you're talking about creation or you're talking about Noah's fl uh, the flood of Noah or you're talking anything has to do with water, you can just give them water to taste. So you're talking about creation of fruit, you can just give them a small piece of a fruit. Um, you know, um, fruit of the spirit, you can again give them a, a, a fruit or you're talking about um, Jesus feeding the 5,000, you can give them a piece of bread. Uh, so just use your creativity, um, uh, you know, and how you could um, uh, cater to all of these uh, senses uh, in teaching. And when you do that, you know, your class will be very, very creative, attractive, and uh, children will love it. And also they will remember it for the rest of their lives because you have actually catered or um, ministered to them through one of their, um, uh, you know, uh, learning types, the senses that most uh, uh, dominates them or appeases their kind of learning style. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts? None, dear. 
Okay, so then we'll move on to the eight different intelligences or uh, ways of learning. Now, um, Howard Gardner, a professor of education at the Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education, uh, has identified eight different intelligences or ways of learning. Uh, he calls it the eight gifts. Uh, so when we look at these different kind of eight uh, gifts that each one of us possesses or each child possesses, uh, you know, it just shows us how God has created each one of us to respond uh, individually in different ways uh, to different kinds of content, uh, whether it is language, music, nature, or other people. So all of us have all of these eight gifts or um, each child possesses all of the eight gifts. Now, what are the eight gifts? The first one is the word gift, uh, which is a linguistic um, kind of learning. The other, second one is logic gift, uh, children who learn logically or mathematically. The third one is um, a picture gift, children who learn through uh, picture spatial learning. Um, um, or, uh, you know, children who learn through body gifts, that is uh, kinesthetic kind of learners, bodily kind of learners, music gift, uh, children who learn musically, uh, personal gifts uh, through interpersonal relationships, self-awareness gift, it is through intrapersonal uh, learning that, you know, by themselves, they are. Uh, they love to learn. They don't like to learn in a group. They learn best being left to themselves alone. And then the classifying gift, which is the naturalist gift. So every child possesses all these eight kind of gifts, but they operate comfortably in either one or two uh, gifts, which means that one or two gifts will be more dominant than the rest. OK, so when we are teaching or preparing our lessons or preparing our activities, we need to keep in mind all of the five senses and all of these eight gifts. And uh, hence, we can, you know, uh, uh, find activities that will cater to all of these five senses or um, uh, most of the five senses and all the eight uh, learning style of gifts that uh, each individual has. And, you know, when we use it, uh, children will be benefited and will learn very, very well okay um, so each student's learning style will consist of a combination of these gifts uh, and children learn best when uh, these the classroom activities appeals to their dominant intelligences so they will have one or two which is more dominant than the other uh, rest of the other uh, six or um, seven okay um, so um, you need to you know uh, bring out activities that will appeal to their dominant intelligences. Therefore, as uh, teachers, as ministers uh, uh, ministering to children, uh, we should include activities that appeal to each learning style. OK, so while we're choosing uh, material, when we're choosing uh, images or activities, um, we need to cater to each child's learning gift. And when we do, uh, we will minister very, very effectively to each child. But, you know, we need to be very careful about one thing. When we are uh, ministering, we, you know, we should not choose material or activities that will appeal to our or suit our own learning style. I said all of us as adults also have our own learning styles. OK, so we should not just we should be very careful that we're not use, choosing activities um, or, uh, you know, things um, that we need want to show or demonstrate that will appease to our own learning styles. So be careful not to fall into the trap of doing things that are most comfortable for us. But while we are preparing for children, we need to basically uh, do it with kids in mind. That means we need to um, find activities that will uh, appeal to all the five senses and the, uh, the most of the eight, uh, uh, you know, gifts of learning. OK, so when we do that, you know, uh, when we remember each uh, child and when we present and do our class in a very creative way, um, then, you know, um, uh, we are able to understand that each child is created in the image of God. 
uh, we are catering to their style of learning um, and you know um, we become a mentor and a faith friend uh, you know as uh, you uh, creatively meet each child's need and help them in their learning process and children will really appreciate that they will love you uh, they will want to come and listen and be part of your class and uh, you know their learning will be more meaningful and more um, effective so remember that each child is created in the image of god according to god's perfect plan each one of them are different each one of them are unique each one of them have their own learning styles their own gifts so we need to plan likewise and when we do that we become a good a mentor and a faith friend uh, and we'll help children in the learning process okay so we look at the first uh, one which is a linguistic um, gift that is uh, those who learn through uh, words okay so basically these kind of children uh, they learn by seeing and hearing words so like i already mentioned you know to the five senses of of hearing and seeing voice modulation uh, also when seeing you use a lot of hand movements uh, you know facial con uh, facial um, expressions like if the person is crying you make a crying face if the person is happy you make a happy face if the person is very sad you make a sad face you know so uh, and make maintain eye contact uh, also that also helps so these children learn to the linguistic style that is word gift they basically learners who learn by seeing and hearing words so uh, you know uh, use voice modulation facial contact body language enacting doing things uh, acting like you know zacchaeus climbed up the tree and then he went and hid and he didn't want jesus to see him and then jesus came and stood near the tree and then he looked up so you look up you know so do all of those uh, things so basically demonstrations like i showed you object lessons um you know provide them pictures videos um voice modulation body movements eye contact and facial expressions so when you do that uh, children who have this word gift uh, the linguistic hearers will learn by um uh, by what they see and what they hear and then we have those who learn uh Uh, logically or mathematically they have the logic gift uh, you know these learners mostly classify or characterize things for understanding a specific topic okay so these children understand patterns numbers equations and relations relationships better uh, as compared to other children so you need to provide them games and puzzles and quiz and things like that so even if you are starting your um, lesson you can have basically um, an activity that you know will appeal to these kind of learners and also you can give them puzzles in the end so you can see some of them who are logically lo who have the logic gift even when you're teaching them they'll be listening to you but if you give them the workbook you know they'll have different puzzles in the workbook i have seen children when i'm teaching them they'll open the student workbook and they will start you know doing the puzzles that are there not in that chapter but you know in all the rest of the other uh, uh, lessons that are there in the student workbook so these children just basically are doing the puzzles but they at the same time they are also uh, listening to you so you know give them puzzles or quiz or you know just uh, uh you know get them to um, you know even through this demonstration which i showed you which has a lot of numbers they will like that you know and uh, also get uh, do an attention getter which uh, will have an activity which will appease to their uh, learning through uh, logic okay uh our time is up so we'll stop here okay anyone has any questions any questions no if not uh, we will end class here okay thank you all for joining class uh, okay see you all bye have a good day and see you tomorrow for our next class okay thank you thank you ma'am thank you